Here we're going to solve Code Force's round 890, Division 2, Problem C, to become max. In this problem, we're given an array of integers a of length n, and we can do an operation on this array. We can choose some index i, such that a i less than or, a, a plus, less than or equal to a i plus 1, and increase a i by 1. And we have to find the maximum possible value of the maximum of this array after performing this operation at most k times. In the input, we're given bounds on these values for n and k. We have up to 100 test cases, and our value for n can be between 2 and 1,000, while k can go up to 10 to the power of 8. And here we have to output the answer to this problem, simply the max of all maxes of the array. Now let's solve this problem. We have n less than or equal to 1,000, and k less than or equal to 10 to the 8th. Immediately, this implies that with k, we want to do some logarithmic or constant time operation. So let's see if we can write a checking function for our maximum value that can run in log logarithmic or constant time based on k. So let's just see if we can check for some max m in constant or logarithmic time. In this case, consider two indexes i and j. So we'll consider only the elements between these two indexes, i.e. the elements between ai all the way to aj. So let's see if our max is possible within this range, and we can check for every pair of indexes like this and get our answer. So to see if this range works, what can we do? Here we'll have two conditions. One is that we'll need our number of moves that we can do to be greater than or equal to each of the individual differences we have which is m minus ai plus m minus ai plus 1 uh, minus 1, because we only need our element after ai to be 1 less than m, not anything greater than that, and so on, all the way to m minus aj minus j minus i minus 1. And what does our second condition have to be? Our second condition is that we need our rightmost element to not be changed, or we need aj to be large enough already, or aj to be greater than or equal to what uh, m minus j minus i, because that's the only element that we are not changing, so we can make everything to the left of it large enough to fit the criteria of this problem. Finally, we have a check function that can check a value for our maximum, so we can just binary search on what our maximum can be, and our check function will automatically tell us whether or not a middle is feasible. Now let's code this problem. Let's start by encoding our variables, t, n, and k, which are all integers. And let's keep an array of numbers, which we'll call nums, as a vector. Now let's start reading our inputs. We'll input into our t, which is our number of test cases. And we'll iterate through each of these test cases with the while loop. Inside each of these test cases, we'll input into our n and k, where n is our number of numbers, and k is the number of operations we can use. And we'll clear our vector at each test case, because we don't want to reuse numbers from the previous test case. And then we'll input into each value for our numbers, so each of a i. We'll do this by keeping some number cur and putting into cur and pushing this into our vector. Now let's write our checking function, which will return a Boolean variable. And we want to check a certain maximum m. Inside this checking function, what we want to do is we want to iterate through all n starting points for our subarray. So once we have our maximum m, we're going to iterate through zero, from 0 through n, which are all starting points. And inside of each of these loops, with each of these starting points, we'll, we can just iterate through current endpoints. So we'll have a certain number of moves left, which will keep going as we shift from endpoint to endpoint. And our max necessary, or the number of moves we need to make, will initially be m. But as we go to the next step, we'll decrement this by 1. Now let's iterate through endpoints. So let's check our current endpoint. If our current number is greater than or equal to what we need, then we'll return true. Otherwise, we'll decrement our number of moves, and we'll, our necessary will be decremented by one as well. But if we have less than zero moves left after this, we'll break out of this loop. And finally, we'll return false if none of our start and end points work. Now we can write our binary search function.
This is pretty standard. Initially, we'll keep our low at zero and our high at something large, like 10 to the ninth power. Then we'll keep taking the middle value and checking if the middle works. So we'll write, run a while loop. If our um, middle number, which is our low plus high plus 1 over 2 as an integer, if checked or works, then we'll move our left endpoint over to the middle, as our smallest possible answer will be the middle value. Otherwise, we'll move our right endpoint to middle minus 1, because middle cannot work. So our answer must be in the range low to middle minus 1. And then we'll return low at the end, because at this point, our lower bound will be equal to our higher bound. Finally, let's output our answer to this problem. To do this, all we need to do is just print out the value, the binary search return, and we'll print out an end line. Let's check this with the given input. Pasting it in, we see that our values of 4, 7, 179, 5, 7, and 6 all match up. So let's submit this to the Codeforce platform now. Let's submit this to problem C to become max. And as you can see, when you submit, this was accepted. Thanks so much for watching the video.